Natalia, welcome to the show. Thank you. <laughs> so happy to have you here. I saw you at the Latin Grammys. I think you were part of our live stream we did um, after the show. Mm -hmm. Or maybe it was even during the show, but you spoke with a couple of our hosts there. Mm -hmm. um, and that was so exciting. You had just won. So we had you fresh off of that. Uh -huh. So congratulations for those Thank wins. You. Thank you. Yeah. Um, and I remember watching you speak with them and I was like, who is this artist? Because I wasn't that familiar with you yet. And then I realized that I definitely wanted to have you on the show so that we could also talk to you. So thank you for yeah. so much for having me. <laughs> yes. So that was for Hasta la Raiz. Hasta la Raiz. Right. Okay. <laughs> there you go. Good. Do you feel better now? Yes. You got, got one. Got that out of the way. Done. There yeah. we go. So with that, would you mm -hmm. consider that your first, basically, after Mujer Divina, sort of the, the first album that really puts you into the, in the category of Latin folklore, yeah. folk music? Um, in a way. In a way, because Hasta la Raiz is... It has some folklore, but it's very little, I believe, comparing to Musa's. Right. Um, Musa's went more directly to, and it's just like um, a little touch of folklore. I don't yeah. believe it's really folk, because if that you... That one still has the pop element. Uh -huh, if, yeah. And if you go and listen like the real folklore from Mexico or Latin America, mm -hmm. then you will see like the real... Uh, a thing but it's just like I was trying to to have some of that and with Asa La Raiz it was similar but at the same time I wanted to sound and found, found the pop sound uh, and the mixed and and I and I wanted to and I wanted the album to sound like Mexico and to so you can hear that I come from Mexico and my music comes from Mexico mm -hmm. still. Mm -hmm. So I was trying like to mix um, with Asa La Raiz something like a wapango, but to make it sound uh, modern and contemporary. Right. Uh -huh. Did that album feel like a crossover though to more mainstream music? I mean, because you won a Grammy for that mm -hmm. album, right? Did yeah. that Did that have a big impact on your career? Of yeah, bringing you to a whole well, new audience. Well, that impressed me a lot. I wasn't expecting <laughs> something like that. I, I did. I didn't even go to the party. Yeah. If I knew to the Grammys. No, no. That be, when I won for Hasta la Raiz. Yeah. No, I didn't. Um, I was like, nah, there's no way. <laughs> it's not gonna happen. And. But does it feel know. important to you when to, when you do win? Or are you like, oh, wow, this does make me feel well, like I've reached a new level? When I'm working on a project, I am not thinking about winning anything. Yeah. Right. But the experience, like the, the, the part that I like the most is, my, my favorite part is the process. So now, the, at least the last projects that I've been doing, Hasta la Raiz and also Musas, I was more thinking about the process, like the people I was going to work with, um, the way we were going to record the music, and all the influences, and the producers, and the part of the mixing, and all that, the art, all that. I love the, the process of making an album. So when you win, it's like, it's like, Wow, o sea, it's, it's, it's very special because then all the people that were involved into the project, they get really happy. And it's like the celebration for Hasta la Raiz. Like we went to this very expensive restaurant that we didn't know it was going to be so expensive. And we were like, yes, we want champagne. Yeah, and we have wine, to. let's drink everything. And I want all the menu for all of them. And <laughs> <laughs> were you watching the Grammys? Huh? Did you watch the Grammys as they were happening? No, 
You didn't even watch? No, 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 no. I wasn't expect. I I don't remember <laughs> what I was doing. I think I was in my holidays. Yeah. I don't even remember. Did someone call But you to tell you that you won? You know or? who told me? Uh, my friend Gabi Moreno. Yeah. Which is a singer from Guatemala. Uh huh. And she's great. She's all the time telling me like important news <laughs> about yourself, <laughs> about myself. <laughs> she's like, "Hey, you won!" And then my manager and the rest of my team called yeah. me. But the first, <laughs> the, the really, really first one was there. That sh and the, another one is Joy from Jesse Joy. Oh yeah. And they both are like my. That's so cute. Contact <laughs> yeah. to. But well, that's that's great. Uh, what a good feeling to not be tied to it and be concerned about that right. so much. Like that's feels very freeing and It's, you know allows you to think about the other things like the art and the process of the music and not worry about what's the reception going to be as much. I know it it could get very stressful at certain point when with us a raíz. I remember a day when I was like, what am I going to do now? I have no idea right. of what my next album is going to be because af after all those uh, awards and all that, uh, um, uh, all, all the, the things, uh -huh, see, I was like <gasps> at certain <laughs> point and then I was like, I know, I'm not going to even, I, I don't want to waste my time thinking mm -hmm. about mm -hmm. this. But I still don't know what to do, so I'm going to do something with the Macorinos because... I'm not gonna release that album, and it's gonna be just for fun. <laughs> and I am in the middle of a tour, so let's go into the studio and try this new thing that the label is not gonna be like. We want to release this music. So the Macarin, Ma Macarinos, uh -huh. a guitar duo. Yeah, in their 80s. Yeah, in is their right? 70s. In their 70s. Okay. Um, almost how, 80s. Almost 80s. How, how famous are they, or well known are they in Mexico, or are they more obscure? Mm. They're they're famous, but probably with people more uh, adult. It, yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. So you yeah. said I want to work with these two f folk, uh -huh. real Mexico. They're they're folk like a artists. legend to me, I believe, and to many people, and for music because they work with very important uh, singers and artists that did something very important for music since long ago, but. These days, it, they are mostly in the back. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, so I wanted to collaborate with them and bring them into the in to the front. Yes. And be a part of the project and be more like a band, but still I am a solo artist. <laughs> but we were working the way bands probably work. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they're they're on Musas. Yes, and and volume two, which is a yeah, the soon to be coming volume yeah. two. Yes. Okay, yeah, yeah. So was that really? I know we d we sort of just went into that with Asa La Raiz, but but performing with them and working with them was even more of a deep dive into the culture and the sounds of of real Mexico folk. And I'm curious w how you were raised and what your uh, sort of childhood was like. Was because because I feel like there's a lot about you exploring Mexico and exploring that heritage now. Mm -hmm. Was that not so much in the part of your life when you were growing up? Yeah, sort of like a pride and a and a real you know connection. No, that to the was roots. that was part of my childhood, especially because, for example, my my father, he loves uh, Violeta Parra. So he was playing Violeta Barra on the piano all the time and asking me to sing Gracias a la Vida. And he was all the time like that. But there was a moment when I didn't like that music. And I was like, no, I want to go modern and <laughs> mm -hmm. I just want to hear my type of music. But I don't know, through the years um, and through the, the projects that I've been doing, I found that there's something really special and there's a lot of richness into that type of music. Yeah. Even though I still listen to very, mo very modern things. But um, I wanted to get closer to that. And uh, through, th through doing that, I find that I, I, fi I finally, like I'm, I'm getting to my own 
spirit and soul and the way I sing is more attached to to the lyrics and the music and the gender and all that. Like it, it's been like a good school in a way for me doing like those projects. So it's for fun, but I am also like learning a lot. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, I, th- I think it's really nice that your music exists on a plane with other artists who are like popier, let's say, you know, like Shakira is like, a, you know, a sound that a lot of people know. Your music, you've been able to retain a very authentic sound and also like be very curious and do all this exploration mm-hmm. and that it's still really finding an audience, mm-hmm. you yeah. know, that they're so open to exploring See, that with you. Yeah, yeah. that is that is amazing <laughs> and I feel very grateful for that with all of them because as I was saying like when I started Musas I wanted to go back to this Bohemia vibe mm. I mean having like music at home and hanging out with Macorinos and <laughs> listening to other musicians and talking about music and stuff and eating <laughs> este <laughs> everything and <laughs> drinking mezcal and just chilling you know yeah. and, and going like through those universes that are of musicians that I admire mm-hmm. and then going into the studio and not taking it too serious yeah. but playing with music I wanted to do that and then I didn't know if the the people that follow my music from before were gonna like that project because right. it was more because I I like that music mm-hmm. and then everyone else around started getting very excited <laughs> about the project and they were like no we truly believe that this could be your next album and the label was that like that so I was like okay so this is gonna be out soon yeah this is gonna be out like last year so we start like doing ev- everything faster hmm. than we were doing it and we went into the studio and in like two weeks we tried we couldn't but we tried to record the whole thing which was like 26 songs oh, wow. something like that we almost finished we had to go three times again to the studio in short uh, periods of time and then we finally div- have had to divide the music in two pieces because mm-hmm. it was there were too many songs no? mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah I, we talk sometimes on this show and it's something I like to think about a lot about how sometimes being really specific is the most universal you know yeah that that people can really feel that you yeah. know and it's mm-hmm. like you can tell a story that the details are so specific to that person you're telling a story about, but that resonates with people, mm-hmm. and then they can end up connecting with that in a really strong way, even if they don't know anything about the life that yeah. you're telling, you know? So, yeah. But there's something that, when you feel that it's genuine, you, I don't know, it touches something deeper yeah. than, than trying to be generic, mm-hmm. uh-huh. you know, than trying to be really open and accessible, but in a way that doesn't feel authentic, so then it doesn't resonate as much. Right. Damn. Yeah. It, it, you know, we have to bring up Coco, of course, and yes. I feel like the movie Coco is a good example of this because it, it it's very specific, the world that it's set in, you know, yeah. like they really did their homework and really set up the details Same. of that world to feel very authentic from what I understand. And... That movie has been so successful and has, makes people cry who might not even have it. any connection I have to not that seen culture. It. I listened to the song in all of its forms <laughs> and like just remember wept. me as many just versions. Wept. Yes. Yeah, like I it's know. just as powerful. It's so yeah. powerful. Well, get ready to see the movie. I, I mean, I will. I I can't if you cry just from the song. I cry just from the song. <laughs> yeah. So no, um, you're gonna cry. Oh yeah. man. You're gonna cry. I mean, listening to that boy, the little boy it. sing it. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I can't imagine um, that being connected to more emotion. Right. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so it it seems very uh, appropriate that you are involved with that film because it's another example yeah. of that. Yeah. So how did that happen? How did you get brought on to that song for Coco? Well, the, um, the team of Pixar called uh-huh. me, which was uh, 
such a big surprise yeah. for me. I was like, wow. And uh, we were very busy <laughs> at the moment. So Doing it was like, the, yeah, with Musas and touring. And it was like a crazy, crazy moment. Really, like we were doing everything at the <laughs> same time. So I was like, okay, I really want to do it and we didn't know what to where to set settle the moment of recording the, the song because there was no time at all and i actually record the song in between one trip and another in the city like at 12 p uh, in the night in the middle of the night yeah. something um, so you recorded then, it separately from miguel yeah yeah okay yeah 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 and um what did when you I heard, What did they give you to hear? Did, was it they your gave me version? something like a, that was gonna be like the the version, but it was in the process as well. And when I heard the song, I loved it. And then I was like, and they told me sing the song and we will see. And so I was like, okay, I have, to, I must do my <laughs> best, so I can be a part of the movie. Yeah. But then I knew the people from the movie and all the team, and they were very nice to me. Mm. And was the movie they, finished? Like, did you see the movie? No, I, 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 I could. I watched the movie after I recorded the song. Oh wow! Okay. So I could, like, before I was just trying to imagine yeah. through this the things and the story that they told me. Uh huh. And um, but also what I loved was the fact that it has a lot to do with the, the way I. I believe and think about uh, our roots and and the connection with Mexico that I've been learning and doing all, through all, all this last five years, mm -hmm. and the the important things that 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 are happening now. So yeah. it it's not just a movie; it's yeah. an story. It has much more be because of the moment mm -hmm. and this they in the history that we're having right now yeah. as as neighbors right. so it's so important and uh, it made me feel very proud and honored to be to be part of that movie and of course of course it, it was going to be so successful i i knew it but i, I was also like very impressed that that Pixar wanted to make a story about Mexico and a tradition that is so important for us, which is like yeah. the Day of the Dead. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, I I've always been as aware of the Day of the Dead as I was made to be in elementary school, and I was kind of taught what it was ish. And I used to live in Los Angeles, and it was a bigger deal there. I remember than here, like it permeated the general culture a little bit more. But I definitely learned a lot more about it just from watching Coco. Yeah, yeah. me too. Yeah. And did did I, you? Me <laughs> too. Yeah, really. Like they did such a research as he yeah. well done. Mm. It, it, it was so respectful and beautiful. And the most impressive thing to me was to see that is the way we live it. It is actually like the mm -hmm. real way there's mm -hmm. certain parts where the camera goes like into this magical world yeah is like that and it is like that if you go to little towns in mexico and yeah. you see the people how they love each other how they talk to each other and it's like that mm. so i love that i love to see the the way they put it on on screen yeah, yeah. i hadn't even really thought about the fact that we have a president who's yelling build the wall and then <laughs> and millions of american children are going to see this movie and fall even more in love with yeah Mexican when i culture. was watching the movie i was crying because of that right i would it made me like very emotional to, to think what's gonna happen now because so many people are gonna see these and right. have you been able to feel great. that impact Aside from you, you and your career, which is a different thing, but can you feel the impact of that of the of the power of this movie in Mexico? Yeah, like, are people responding there in a in a in a surprised and like yeah. excited way? I believe I haven't been there. Oh, okay, uh, but <laughs> while the movie was being yeah, but I know it set records in Mexico. Did it? it I forget. 
It's like the top grossing animated film of all time or something yeah. like that. It's I mean, it's been a crossover animated. I feel it like was, it's like there's only it, a handful of Pixar or animated things that people would even suggest to me like, oh, no, you do want to see this. It yes. It's animated, yeah. but you do want to go. And yeah. this is. One no, of no. It was, I mean, many people has been talking about the movie yeah. and they go and uh, yeah, we, we love it. And it's something familiar in a way. But I was very curious about seeing how the people from other countries right. mm -hmm. and other places will react yeah. to, to the movie. It's so beloved. I mean, right, it fits in perfectly with the work that you're doing right. and the world. So it's like it's just it's just a really special thing to be like yeah. coming in your career right now and then to be recognized for a, a Grammy nomination. Right. So and yeah. well, but even going back to Coco, an Oscar nomination for I the mean, song. Right. Yeah. Which is insane. I yeah. Know. Are do you are you gonna be attending the Oscars? Any I don't chance know. that you're okay? I don't know. My managers were <laughs> were telling me that yesterday. Your, your friend will tell you. And I just my friend will tell <laughs> yeah, me. Yes, exactly. <laughs> you got an invitation. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we're hoping um, that we're gonna see you perform it at the Oscars. I was thinking that. Don't yeah. you think I mean, don't they do the nominated songs? Um, yeah, yeah, I don't know who which it, version? It, yeah, which version? There's several versions, but I'm sure yeah. we would all love to see Did, you and oh Miguel God, perform right? that together. I mean, what Oscars. a cool thing to to have all of the different versions, like not necessarily at the Oscars, yeah. but just an experience of yeah, ugh. yeah, yeah. Well, I even though if I go or I don't go, uh -huh. yeah. like the fact that the movie um, picked the attention yeah. mm -hmm. of everyone. That's amazing. That's so amazing. Totally. So yeah, let's see what happens. But but I feel very happy because I I met the people that work on the music and they did such a great job. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. It, it, well, I just wanted to ask um, what your thought is about uh, everyone saying this has been this huge crossover year for Latin music, especially. Mm -hmm. um, you know, because of Despacito and Mi Gente, and there are a lot mm. of other slightly lesser known examples, but tons of examples of Latin music placing on the Billboard charts in a way that's pretty unprecedented before. And I was wondering if you, if you feel that, like, how does that feel from your side? Does it seem like you're finding, like, Latin music is finding a bigger audience in the U.S. than it has before this year? I... I don't know. Or not yet. I don't really know if it's this still year, but yeah. um, let's see if I really understand what you're asking. Yeah, just um, because some Latin songs have been so successful this year. Uh -huh. ah. and, and it's partially because you have like Justin Bieber coming on to Despacito and then all of a sudden it's the number one song or you have I know. Beyonce doing Mi Gente and then all of a sudden, it's, yeah. you know, so. Okay. So it's almost not... No, but then it does it does seem to be trickling over. I don't have all the information yeah. in front of me, apologies, yeah. but but in general it yeah. has been a bigger year for Latin music on the charts mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. So, uh, we just I have been believe, talking a lot about it yeah. wondering. I I think I know I uh-huh. However I you know want where to you're it. going. Yeah. No, <laughs> what I believe now is that it's happening something that any wall can avoid. Yeah. Which is like the real thing that we're living right. now right. It's like, like globalization uh -huh. in general yeah yeah and latin people um people from the states we are like doing this mm -hmm. yeah because we're finally catching i i don't know why maybe because now it's easier to see the real um the real way of of their life in many places uh, with our gadgets right, and all right. that. I don't know. Mm -hmm. But uh, now we are getting closer. Mm -hmm. And nothing will avoid that. Yeah, I think there's no turning back. I mean, the demographics in this country are changing so much that you know more and more Americans speak Spanish, and that will only yeah. continue to increase. So it makes for, sense. For example, in Mexico, so many people are coming to our country. Uh -huh. Because they, they want to 
before three, four years ago, I was going to my favorite restaurant, which is El Barnita. That's one of my favorites. <laughs> it's like my house. Yeah. I, I know the owners are my friends, and whenever I arrive, I go directly from the airport to, to the restaurant. So they gave me my soup and <laughs> all my Mexican <laughs> Where stuff and city? tacos and stuff that I love. Yeah. So before, four years ago, I would go there, and I would see my friends and people that I know. Now... I go and I see people from the States wow. going there because they love it. And it's like half Mexican and half from other people places. People living there or tourists? Tourists. Oh. And they go there because they feel like home. Mm -hmm. They feel like very in a very... And if you go to them and ask them why they went to that restaurant, uh -huh. they say, well, food is amazing, people are great, <laughs> music is amazing. And uh, it's just like right. that, it, as simple as that. Yeah, right. It's, the walls between finding things that you that's easy to know mm -hmm. where to go, mm -hmm. what's the hot spot, mm -hmm. what's the mm -hmm. best mm -hmm. restaurant. Yeah. yeah. So I believe that is impacting also the art, mm -hmm. culture, music, everything. Right. And the, the fact that we could be m mixed and right. that's fine. That's a natural. That's great. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Thing. And it's yeah. interesting at a time where the, the songs that you're mentioning are kind of these big banger pop songs with lots of, you know, the electro pop sound and you are stripping back in this time and still being received mm. with huge praise and love. And that's, I think, another interesting thing that's happening, which is like mm. this returning to roots as your as your album, your last yeah. album was. Mm -hmm. um, that that's also simultaneously happening where where a lot of music is going in this pop, um, electronic, you know, mm -hmm. no instruments direction, and you're going in the opposite way. Yeah, and being received beautifully. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's nice too. Yeah. yeah, thanks. Sometimes that is scary to to see. Yeah, you have what's <laughs> happening with music industry, mm -hmm. and then I'm, I feel like in the middle of a forest, <laughs> losing my phone. <laughs> I'm my loving cellular. it. Just hold on to that feeling. Yeah. yeah. It's great. No, We're but, all for it. Yeah. But you had that. And you also produced. You're a producer as well. Did you, in 2011, you won Best New Producer yeah. Award? That's yeah, cool. Yeah. That's cool. I, I don't know. I, award from who? I don't Indie O Music Awards? Is that like a Mexican, yeah. uh, like a Gra Mexican Grammy <laughs> type of thing? What? <laughs> My nerdy notes. I Are you laughing at me? So, no, I'm laughing at me. <laughs> Don't look at her notes. <laughs> oh, really? Did I want that? This is your whole life. You did did yeah. I want that? <laughs> okay, that's What else do you want to know about yourself? <laughs> uh, I'll call up your friend. I'll give her some. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> she might tell you better. <laughs> She's better than Wikipedia. <laughs> yeah. But no, uh, is so that something that, yeah, that you've you've also... In addition to now, you know, you're doing this singer songwriter, authentic, you know, just voice and guitar stuff. But you've also dabbled plenty in producing big sounds, and I mean, your I previous do albums love were very popular. Producing, I do love it. It's them, but I had to step away a little from that dream, you know, of being a producer because I was going to that direction, and in a way. Um, I saw that uh, there was there was something with my personal connection to the songs and the part of going on the stage and connecting mm -hmm. to to the lyrics and the song and what I was singing for people and producing and being like having all these dreams about production that was taking me a little far mm -hmm. from the other the other part mm -hmm. of of this so i decided to to focus more on on the part of being the artist and letting other great producers and musicians to come and collaborate uh, with me and yeah. the music and that was amazing because before I was like, okay, uh, I'm gonna play drums and I'm gonna play bass. Give me the guitar <laughs> and th yeah, do you play I'll drums do the arrange. Yeah, I did for hoo hoo hoo. I was playing every instrument. Wow. And I wanted to prove myself that I was able to do, do that, yeah. and that and that I could do it. And then once you did so, it, you were like, okay. No, no, no. And then I, I did it and. Um, 
on Mujer Divina, I was also kind of the same. Uh -huh. But then I realized that I had to step back of all of that and just focus on lyrics. Yeah. So easy, like just right. lyrics and melodies mm -hmm. and sing. Right. And that, <laughs> that was hard. That yeah. was hard. That happened because I got tendinitis and I wasn't able to play yeah. anything. <laughs> So life, I learned that works. because yeah. uh -huh, because I at first I had that problem with yeah. my arm, and um, then I was just like, oh, this is nice, like yeah. not having uh -huh. any yeah. instrument, yeah, and being able to. So now I love working with great producers and making like a team, yeah. and, and and having that work. I will give my face to all of you, <laughs> but behind me there's many people, great. Uh, people and artists working yeah. with me. So the new album is out on February 9th. Yeah. Right? Um, Musas Volume 2? Yeah. Hmm? Musas Volume 2. Yes. Okay. Is it going to feel like a continuation from Volume 1? Yeah. 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 Okay. It's, a, it's the same piece of music. Got it. It's um, the universe of Muses is, is one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We had to divide it uh -huh. into two volumes because it, we can put it in only in you one. You didn't want right. a double disc. <laughs> and I didn't want to to make a double album mm -hmm. I see immediately. Mm -hmm. I wanted people to to the, slowly just savor it. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. I, I yeah, I just feel like it's a very warm piece of music. Yeah. And so I wanted them like to be more uh, prepared for the second part mm -hmm. so yeah. it's not isn't i hope it isn't that strong as if it was all together in at first right and what's the mix the very, very originals beginning. and covers mm -hmm. both original and cover songs yeah. right yeah yeah this time i put i put uh, derecho de nacimiento for example which is a song that i wrote many years ago but i never record that song and it's a tribute to Mexico and Latin America it's like part of our story and people were the ones who helped me to make that lyric so it's the, I wanted to put that into the album as well nice. well maybe we'll see you back at the Grammys next year then <laughs> Since they love the first one so much, I don't we'll know. Just saying, yeah. knock on wood. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> let's see. Let's yeah, see yeah. what happens. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, I'm glad we could steal you for a little time while you're here. Have fun at the ceremony. Yes. Congratulations. Yeah. Swear yeah. day. And thank uh, you. Yeah. We'll see you next time you're in town. I hope. Let's see how many very important artists I can touch. Yes. <laughs> it's good to give yourself yeah. a game Great. to play. Yeah. <laughs> I was telling that to my sister. Like, she was like, oh. We'll look for you on the red carpet, <laughs> just poking touch everybody. Yeah. <laughs> so, so I was asking her, like, who you want me to touch? <sighs> Bono. Okay, I'm going to try. That's a good one. Bono's the number like one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Well, good luck with that. <laughs> and Natalia, thank, thank you. Thank you. <laughs>